School can sometimes get a bit dull, can't it? Well, don't despair, because most schools these days have realised that you can learn just as much in other environments as you can in the classroom. And that's why outdoor education is becoming such an integral part of many schools' curriculums. One of the most challenging varieties of outdoor education is an expedition, where students will enter a natural setting for an extended period of time. An expedition can offer many fantastic experiences, and you'll learn about yourself, communities and the natural environment. But you need to be aware that you'll be entering a new environment which requires different skills and greater responsibilities. This program will provide you with the information you need to help you prepare for your expedition. To help us with this task, we're going to follow a group of St Michael's Grammar School students as they embark on an expedition conducted by the Outdoor Education Group. We're standing in Wilson's Promontory National Park, which is the southernmost tip of mainland Australia. The students will hike for seven days around the coastline, camping at various spots along the way. Each expedition has specific requirements, so we can't provide you with a definitive inventory. But the clothing, supplies and equipment these students will take is a useful example of a typical expedition inventory. Clothing, waterproof jacket, waterproof overpants, walking boots, toiletries, sunscreen, garbage bags and plastic bags, rubber bands, water bag, water bottle, small torch and spare batteries, food, eating utensils, cleaning kit, stove, fuel bottle, waterproof matches, tent, sleeping bag, sleeping mat and backpack. Your school will provide you with a more detailed inventory for your expedition. And remember that you'll probably be sharing tents and cooking equipment with other people, so you won't have to carry everything on the list. Somebody in your group, usually the expedition leader, will also need to carry a first aid kit, maps and a compass, and a mobile phone or two-way radio. Before getting started, the students need to ensure that they pack their backpack correctly. Firstly, put two garbage bags inside the pack to waterproof the contents. At the bottom of your pack, you should put the last item you'll take out, which is usually your sleeping bag. You should also consider stuffing your sleeping bag into a garbage bag and squeezing out the air. This is called vacuum sealing and is a great way to save space. Other heavy items, such as your cooking gear, should also be put at the bottom of your pack. Then stuff your clothes down around the sides of your pack to fill up space. Your food should be packed near the top of the pack to avoid crushing. Put anything you may need during your hike, such as wet weather gear, at the top of your pack. And then seal the garbage bags with rubber bands. Ideally, your tent and sleeping mat would fit inside your pack, but if you don't have space, use the loops on your pack to secure them. You should also consider vacuum sealing them to keep them dry. And don't forget the pockets on your pack. They can hold your lunch, water bottle, maps, and anything else you'll need during your hike. For adults, it's recommended that pack weight shouldn't exceed one third of body weight. And for children, it shouldn't exceed one quarter of body weight. It's important that your pack is comfortable and the weight is balanced, because on most expeditions, you'll be traveling over a variety of terrain. Use the straps to adjust the position of your pack so that most of the weight sits on your hips. To summarize, waterproof the contents of your backpack with garbage bags. Put the last items you'll need to take out at the bottom of the pack. Consider vacuum sealing items like your sleeping bag to save space. Stuff your clothes down the sides. Put heavy items in before your food to avoid crushing. 
Anything you may need on your hike, such as your wet weather gear, should go at the top of your pack or in the pockets. Seal the garbage bags with rubber bands and adjust the straps on your pack until you feel comfortable. All right, now that everyone is packed and ready to go, let's start the expedition. The first day's hike will take the students from Telegraph Saddle Car Park to Sealers Cove, where they'll set up camp. Each expedition will require different clothing and you need to follow the checklist provided for your expedition. But it's worth mentioning some general points about clothing. Cotton, wool and synthetic fibres all have different qualities that make them suitable for different conditions. Wool is an effective insulator when wet, but it dries slowly and can become uncomfortable in hot weather. It's also less flammable than most fibres, so it's the best clothing to wear if you're caught near a bushfire. Synthetics are effective insulators when wet, and they're also quick drying. However, they're generally not fire resistant, and they can quickly become uncomfortable in hot weather. Cotton can offer cool sun protection, but it's not an effective insulator when wet. So jeans are unsuitable for hiking, and cotton t-shirts and wind cheaters should not be worn in cold weather. Wearing several thin layers of wool or synthetic clothing is effective because it traps warm air between the layers, and it also allows more flexibility for the wearer during variations in temperature. In colder conditions, a water and windproof jacket and overpants ensures the utmost insulation of trapped warm air. Comfortable hiking boots with thick woolen socks are an essential item on any expedition. If the boots are new, remember to wear them in before the expedition. And a hat for the sun is also important. To summarise, woolen clothing is warm when wet, slow drying and low flammable. Synthetic clothing is warm when wet, quick drying and non-fire resistant. Cotton clothing offers cool sun protection, but is cold when wet. Wear several thin layers of woolen or synthetic clothing in cold weather. Wear new boots several times before bringing them on an expedition. And wear a hat in the sun. The group passes through some amazing scenery on the first day of their hike. It's a long walk and they arrive at their destination late in the day. At the end of each day, you'll need to set up camp and it's important that you leave plenty of time to do this. Here at Wilson's Promontory and in most other natural areas, Camping grounds will be clearly marked, and you shouldn't camp elsewhere. The cumulative effect of a human presence in natural areas can be extremely detrimental. When choosing a campsite, you should avoid ditches or areas that look like watercourses, water runoffs, dead trees, and overhanging branches, especially on red gums. After choosing an appropriate site, Clear the area of sharp objects. Next, you'll need to pitch your tent. If there's any wind, face the back of the tent into the direction of the wind. There are many varieties of tent, so follow the instructions that come with your tent. And use a rock to hammer in the pegs if you can't push them in. As you can see, it's pretty simple if you know what you're doing. Oh, there's one other thing you should remember. When you take down your tent, Cover the exposed area with loose foliage. This prevents erosion and helps to minimise the impact your presence has on the environment. To summarise, 
leave plenty of time to set up camp. Avoid water runoffs, dead trees and overhanging branches. Clear the area of sharp objects. Face the back of the tent into any wind. Follow the instructions for your tent. Use a rock to hammer in the pegs if necessary. And when you take down your tent, cover the area with loose foliage. The group is greeted by fine weather on the morning of their second day and they set off on the next leg of their expedition. Today, they'll hike from Sealer's Cove to Refuge Cove. Here in Wilson's Promontory, and in many other natural areas, campfires are no longer permitted and you should only use fuel stoves. This is partly due to the danger of bushfires, but it's also because campfires use up all the dead timber in the surrounding area, and this timber provides important habitats for small native animals. However, if you're in an area that allows campfires and you feel that it's necessary, you can light a small campfire. Firstly, ensure that you aren't breaching any fire restrictions. And be aware that on days of total fire ban, even fuel stoves aren't permitted. Position the campfire at least 10 metres away from any tents and downwind. Clear a 3 metre area around the campfire site and dig a shallow depression in the centre of this area to confine the fire. This is as much as we can show you in Wilson's Promontory, but you should also Use dead timber found on the ground first. Keep the fire small. Make sure the fire is completely extinguished after use. And finally, fill in the site and cover with loose foliage. To summarise, abide by fire restrictions. Move at least 10 metres away from any tents and downwind. Clear a 3 metre area around the campfire site. Dig a shallow depression in the centre of this area. Use dead timber found on the ground first. Keep the fire small. Make sure the fire is completely extinguished after use. And fill in the site and cover with loose foliage. The hike to Refuge Cove provides the group with some spectacular views. And when they arrive at Refuge Cove, they head straight down to the beach for a swim. Here in Wilson's Promontory and in many other natural areas, toilets are provided and you should always use them. But what if the area you're in doesn't have these facilities or they don't work? Or